Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to another video of the series where we create a CCI Expert Advisor. This beautiful program is already creating and um, yeah, creating positions on CCI indicator signals and it is providing ASL and ATP. So we make sure that these positions are close. If you didn't watch the previous videos, you should watch them because otherwise you will not understand a thing from this video. So this is the current source code. I will not explain it, of course, just watch the previous videos. And what we add here is, let me look at the game plan, we will add a moving average filter. So a moving average is just another indicator, of course. So we can find it in the indicators directory here and you can find somewhere under a trend the moving average indicator. You can see it has several inputs. So these are the inputs or the parameters that we will define as, um, yeah, as parameters here. And um, we can create a group for this. And this is really cool. This is something I just learned, moving average filter, but you can um, create groups here to structure your inputs. So we can say CCI and for example here we can say uh, trade settings and if we add these groups um, and compile the program you can see the inputs are now really cool and structured. So you can see trade settings, CCI and moving average filter. I mean how cool is that? So let's go back to the moving average <laughs> indicator and you can see the period, uh, the method and the applied to uh, thing and the time frame. These are the things that I want to have as a user input. So what we do here is first of all define the time frame. We can say MA time frame because it shall be a different time frame than the CCI time frame. And here we can say for example period H1, like the one hour time frame. Then we have the MA periods. And just write this down real quick because this is pretty much what we already did for the CCI indicator. This is nothing new. This is just creating some variables here that we can then use um, uh, to tell the PC what specific moving average we want to have. So MA applied price. This is in most cases the close price. Oh, and before this we have the MA method, which is Again, this is nothing fancy. This is just another enumeration that you can look up in the documentation. So you have these four IDs and we can provide a mode SMA for a simple moving average as a default value. But again, the user is allowed to change this always. Oh, and this was one equal sign too much. So what we do here is now we create a handle for this, handle MA like this. And somewhere I have a problem, name is expected. Oh no, I already, whoa, what's my, what's my problem? Oh, um, MA method. I forgot to provide a name for this input variable. Okay, so then as a next step, you have to create another global integer variable, which you should name handle MA or something like this. And then you of course have to create or initialize the handle MA variable in the on init function. This is just like the ICCI, another function call, which will create or return a handle. And the uh, parameters are pretty much the same. You provide the symbol, the time frame, and then all the other parameters for this specific indicator. So in this case, I can do it like this, like a 50 period moving average, and I can now provide all the input variables that we created. So MA period, Shift value, I usually um, choose zero because I do not want to have my MA shifted to the left or to the right side. But I mean, of course, you can provide a value there if you like it. MA method and MA applied price like this. If we click on compile, this is working just fine and we created a handle for a moving average. What we will do here now is we will go inside of our tick function and we will of course use the copy buffer function now provide the handle of this moving average indicator. The buffer number is again zero because we only have this one line here. And then we have the starting position. I usually go with 
zero or one here. I mean, this is personal preference, but maybe we can choose zero and we have a count of one. Then we store these values inside of our MA array, but in this case, we only have one value since our count is one. And we only need one value because we will just check if the current bit price is below uh, the moving average um, for a sell position or if the, the ask price is above the moving average for a buy position. So what we do here is we move. And so if we try to, to check it here, so um, yeah, no, this is fine. So we go inside of this uh, if statement here where we check if there is a signal and after calculating the ask price, we can use this ask price to check if it is above the moving average value inside of the moving average array at index zero. And then make sure to wrap with the body of this if statement, you wrap the whole position opening like this. So this is making sure that we check the moving average filter before we enter a position. And we can do the same for the sale position. So we check if the bit is below the moving average like this, and then we wrap this whole piece of code inside of the body of this if statement. So it is only executed if the filter is uh, successfully checked. And in the chart, of course, we can make sure that we print the value of this moving average here, like this. So this is already really great, I think. So, Make sure to test it uh, always. So the moving average price is calculated and in the test side it also opens this uh, second window if you use a, a second time frame and there you can compare the value. It is roughly 110 and this is exactly the value that is printed in the upper left corner. So you can see this should work. So right now the price is, whoops, where is it? Is it below or above the moving average? It is below the moving average. So we also, uh, so we only see sell positions. And all the buy positions are filtered because the price is currently below the moving average. But um, yeah, this might change as it did here. So the price is now above the um, moving average. So now we are doing buy trades. And yeah, this is, um, yeah, filters working really great. Everything is working just fine. So this is how you can implement any filter into your program. So a filter is typically a, another indicator and the process is always the same. I would suggest that you um, uh, enable or make the user able to change the parameters for this um, next filter indicator and then you have to create a handle you have to initialize the handle in the on in it and then you use the copy buffer function to receive the values and store it inside of some array and then you can use this array to check the filter what i always like to do is i um, add a switch pretty much for this filter so it could be named is moving average filter and i could say true or false and if it is true i want to check the filter if it is false i do not want to check it and there's an easy way to um, check this filter. So we can say either the MA or the is MA filter variable is false or we check the filter. So there's, as I said before, using this or operator, it says that only one condition has to be true for the complete condition to be true. So the program first checks if the MA filter input is false, and if it is false, it doesn't check the second condition. It automatically assumes that the whole condition is true and it enters the body and opens a position. So whenever the moving average filter is false, so it is turned off, then we do not check the filter. And same can be done for uh, before we open a sale position. So we check if the moving average filter is false or if the filter criteria is successfully checked. And you can see there is no error, even if I chose a different type of writing here. So you can see here I wrote is moving average filter is equal to false. And here I wrote this exclamation mark in front of the is moving average filter. 
And this is valid because this exclamation mark just says that you take any expression and pretty much turn it around. So if this is moving average filter, if this says false, then we turn it around, which makes it true. So if this is a little bit confusing, um, just try it out. But this makes a false is ma filter variable true. So this is um, another way pretty much of saying this, but it is a shorter way and you will see it a lot in programming because it, is, it, it makes the code a little bit cleaner. So um, if we now go here to our inputs and well, look at this group structuring, this is so beautiful. So we can say, for example, we turn the filter to false and now we will open a position at every signal just like the program did it before because since uh, because now this um, filter is not used, so it is not checked before the signal is executed. Yeah, so you can see buy and sell positions are always opened and um, just check it on your own PC. So just, this is an easy way of adding any filter. And you can, of course, not only add a moving average filter, you can add a whatever you want, a Bollinger Bands filter, a stochastic filter, a RSI filter, whatever you want. Just give it a go, maybe add 100 filters. You can always add a switch for it so you can turn it on or off. So this is a way of adding a filter and this is already part number three for this programming tutorial series. So in the next part, we'll let, uh, have a look at partial closes. So um, stay tuned, make sure to subscribe, like, all the videos in this series so YouTube can recommend it to more of our fellow traders and we will see each other in the next video tutorial. Until then have a great time and yeah, bye.